microphone. A little pep in your step there, Coach. Uh, yeah, it's an uh, exciting day. Always is this time of year on, on these uh, first Wednesdays of February, uh, but today in particular, really excited about the, uh, the guys we've got on board. we got one more we're, we're waiting on, uh, but really excited about the, the class that we've signed. Uh, I first want to thank our, our staff, uh, not just our assistant coaches, but our uh, administration and compliance, uh, Terrence Warren, our academic advisor, all the people that are involved in uh, the recruiting weekends and, and getting us uh, available to get out and, and find these young men. Uh, and then also our families for putting up with us uh, these last couple months, uh, particularly our wives. Uh, but uh, it's culminated in a, in a class that I think is really going to be a, a bedrock of our, our future. Uh, we've, we've added a, a couple of significant areas, in particular our, our offensive line. We've, uh, we've brought five new uh, young men in that I think all can really be significant contributors, bring tremendous size and, and tenacity. Uh, we've also helped ourselves in the secondary, bringing four defensive backs in and some guys that, that play at an extremely high uh, level, very competitive, uh, some good length, uh, just really good football players. Um, we've got a, a few guys already on campus. Uh, Chase and Virgil's already here going through classes as well as going through our workouts, as is uh, Alan Wright, uh, safety from Blinn College, who's on campus. And then uh, going into this signing class, we also added uh, Gabe Vasquez, who, who, or Jacob Vasquez, uh, who is uh, really doing a nice job for us and has earned a scholarship uh, for this year's class. So uh, we've addressed a number of areas. We've got a kicker coming on board with the big time leg, and uh, we're just really excited about the class. So seven players, if I count it right, from the state of Texas in this class. That's obviously the most you signed in any of your classes here from the state of Texas. Uh, was that your goal going in? Did it just work out that way? What do you have to say about the Texas component? Well, I, I think what we've done is uh, we've we put coaches in uh, the Metroplex as well as you know, we've had coaches in Houston and in Austin before. Uh, the goal wasn't to sign a certain number from Texas, but we're trying to find the best football players. As we bring guys in and evaluate, you know, we, we just look at, we don't look at where they're from. We're looking on tape and then talking to coaches, uh, seeing their measurables, where do guys rack and stack. And I think with our, with our brand getting out nationally, with all the national, nationally televised games we have, uh, we've got a, a great draw in Texas and, and a lot of coaches that have ties there. So uh, I think all that kind of culminated uh, in us, you know, signing some guys from Texas and really excited about those guys that are on board. You have a couple of local guys this year. Was there any change in philosophy as to recruiting locally, or did that just work out like that? No, it, we start here. Uh, Pete Germano is, is our local recruiter. He's one of the strongest recruiters we have on our staff and has been for years. He's got great relationships with coaches here and players here. Uh, and, you know, A year ago, we, we identified some guys. Not all of them decided to come on board. The same thing happened this year, but we're excited about the, the three young men from, from right here in the Valley that are, that are coming on board. Uh, right here in Fresno Edison, A.J. Greeley, we think, and we knew from a long time ago from watching the camps and watching him, we offered him early. Uh, and he's been committed and, and stayed with us. Uh, really outstanding talent. Uh, an explosive player that, that could have played it in Power Five conferences. Uh, just up the road in Modesto, uh, Jared Rice, we think, is an extremely athletic tight end. Plays with tenacity. Uh, he's got great length. Uh, and I think he's a, he's a guy that's, as we go in, into the future, we're going to be having different options in, in getting into more multiple set stuff where we have maybe some two and three tight end sets with, with guys like him that can attach and flex out and be a threat. Uh, and then, you know, uh, down in Kingsburg, having Isaiah Trevino, this guy's massive. Uh, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, you see his parents and you think, where did this guy come from? And he, he kidded, he said, yeah, they call him Big Mike uh, from, from the Blindside movie. And you, you see him around campus, I mean, that guy sticks out. And, uh, He's really going to be a tremendous football player, and so we're, we're excited about all these, all three of these guys that had committed and have stuck with us, even though they had multiple offers. Uh, especially you mentioned with a kid like Greeley, that you identified him early and maybe could have gone to a Power Five school. Is that important to you guys when you get someone like that that, that sticks to their word to stay with you? Oh, that's huge. Um, it's not always the case. You know, a lot of times uh, we use the word commitment a little differently than some recruits do. You know, they. A commitment to some of those guys means I'm, I'm, I'm placing a reservation there. Uh, you know, we, we talk to them about what we mean by commitment, and uh, AJ is certainly somebody who, who stood by it and stood by his word, and, and we're really happy to have him and his family part of our family. Uh, again, he's a tremendous talent, and 
uh, you know, just happy that he, he's not only talented, but he's, he sticks to his word because he had multiple offers. Isaiah Trevino had multiple Pac-12 offers as well, and people trying to chip away at him, and they, and they stood still and said, no, we're, we're sticking with Bulldogs. Coach, what has you the most excited? What one thing about this class has you the most excited? Uh, I think we hit a lot of areas. I, I, th I think, you know, we, we have a fairly well-rounded class. We hit a lot of neat areas, you know, offensive line and secondary in particular where we've had some losses. Um, but the fact that, you know, we've got a couple of playmaker linebackers uh, that, that we feel good about. We've, we've got, you know, a tight end that, that is going to add to the, the package we feel good about. Uh, Bryce Oglesby, we think, is going to be a tremendous back, a guy who's got size, he can run powerfully, make guys miss, a guy with a, with a lot of attention in Texas, and we were able to pull him out of there. Um, I think this year, you know, for whatever reason, uh, we, we probably signed more guys that had more attention on them and, and, and bigger offers, and they decided that Fresno State felt like the, the, the right place for them in their, in their future. So, um, you know, probably the fact that we were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those schools and, and come out on top of, not on all of them, but, but on a significant number of guys. Speaking of those local kids, as compared to, like you just mentioned, a guy from Texas, I saw seven guys from Texas, uh, three local guys. Is that something that just panned out that way this year, or, or is it something that maybe in the future, you know, you might want to get more local guys, or is it just different every year? I, I'd love to sign an entire class from within 20 miles. It'd be a lot easier on our coaches and, and us, but it's not, it's not reality. Uh, there's really good football here in the Valley, and, and unfortunately, it's not a secret anymore. You know, coaches are going to come in here and, and recruit hard, and there's certain young men that want to go away to school. And so, you know, we identify guys we think can, you know, be significant factors in our program. We recruit them hard, uh, but at the end of the day, it's not a draft. They have to decide this the best thing for them, and some some do, and we're excited about the ones that do, and the ones that want to go el elsewhere, you know, we you know, wish them well unless we're playing against them. Among the, the secondary guys, do you see any of those guys being able to uh, provide immediate, immediate help for you on? I, I think all four of those guys have potential to come in here and, and be in our 2D. Uh, you know, from a pure talent standpoint, standpoint, talent standpoint uh, I think it's uh, clear that they, they all four can play. Again, it's, it's how quickly can they pick up our, our schemes and how fast can they play uh, without having to think. Uh, again, Alan being here this spring, I think, is going to have probably the the best chance, but any one of these three can come in and play. For, for AJ, if he's listed as DB, do you know which position he's likely to first start off with? He'll start out at corner. Uh, he can be a nickel. Uh, he's a guy that we, he's talented. We're, we're going to probably, as, as he learns our, our defense, uh, and we feel good about that, he could be a weapon on offense as well uh, and, and do you know certain package stuff with him. Uh, he's also a you know, tremendous you know, return, you know, return guy. Uh, so. There's a, there's a few different ways we, we like him. And uh, Jason, he's already been on campus, but have you had a chance to see how he's progressed season to, with these off-season workouts and stuff? Yeah, I, I can watch him run and I can watch him lift. We can't see him throw the football. Our guys are out on their own throwing today. Uh, the reports are, are really good, but, but I can't go down there and, and, and watch them. And does it help you as a team that the, the two guys that are already enrolled are positions that are of a lot of interest, quarterback and defensive back? Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, you know, Jason was looking for a program where he could come in and compete right away, and I think that was part of the draw for him uh, coming here. Uh, he, he knew that, you know, we didn't have an established quarterback that was, hey, he's the starter and everybody else is fighting for the backup position. Uh, you know, he, he wants to come in and, and, you know, throw his hat in the ring and challenge. Uh, Allen's a guy, same thing. We, we recruited him thinking he's a guy who could come in and compete right away. Uh, talking with Coach Bose, He's competing like heck in the weight room and out at running and really likes how he's flipping his hips and uh, he thinks he's going to be right there in the mix. The only position group I don't see here is wide receiver. Did you think you have enough young guys in the program already or were there some guys that you wanted that you didn't get? How did that, how did that work out? Yeah, our blueprint um, for, for that position, as we went into the recruiting cycle, we didn't have a spot for it. Um, Things have changed. We've had some attrition, and so late we, we got on some guys. Um, but there are some guys that had some interest in us that had other scholarship offers that we just didn't feel great about. Um, we may end up signing someone later in the spring, you know, and see how they progress between now and, and uh, May. Uh, but we also feel good about some of our young walk-on receivers that we think are going to end up earning scholarships. So we, we had to weigh, you know, do we? 
hold on to a, a scholarship for a young man we think we're going to give to, or do we, you know, sign somebody that we're not 100% sold on? Because again, we, we had to pivot a little bit after not planning on signing one. Coach, how has um, social media impacted the recruiting process? For example, you got early commitment guys like, in this case, Tony Green, who like helps promote the program to get guys that, that are on the edge of coming to Fresno State or going elsewhere to get them to come. How, how has that changed? I, I think it's really changed things. Uh, you know, Chasen uh, is, is a great example. Uh, I remember seeing on Twitter that he decommitted from Mississippi State and kind of read about, you know, the, the process that, that why he did that. I hit him up on Twitter that day and said, hey, we'd love to you know, get back in it. We were recruiting him back in the springtime. Uh, and told uh, Coach Woodson because he saw the same thing. And through that relationship, and being able to direct message each other, you know, explain you know what we're all about, and I don't think we're, you know, probably in a position to get him if, if not for social media. And then, like you mentioned, once guys get on board, they want to have the best players around them, and so they're hitting guys up on social media, not necessarily just guys in their own town, but you know, all over the country. And it's really easy to do through you know Twitter, or Instagram, whatever you want to you know use as social media. <clears throat> With with schools able to offer that uh, full scholarship benefit, how did that impact recruiting? Did you feel that impact uh, this, this time around? We didn't get that question from from many uh, recruits, uh, but but I've been assured that that we are going to do full cost of attendance here at Fresno State. So, uh, you know, the fact that our administration has, has told us we're going to support it and do it. Not everybody in our league is. Not everybody in, in the you know group of five. Uh, conferences are going to do it, but Fresno State's going to be one that is. And so, um, you know, in my conversations, now I've told our staff, and they, they had maybe different conversations with, with the young men, but I said, make sure they know. Uh, but nobody asked me directly about that. Okay. Was that a selling point, the fact that? Uh, oh, it's Fresno definitely State? a selling point, you know, because I think a lot of other programs at the Power Five level want to distance themselves from the group of five schools saying, hey, you come here, you're going to get this big you know, uh, bundle of benefits. You go there, you get a smaller bundle of benefits. We're going to be going toe to toe, and and that's why I think we we're able to sign some guys that had other offers that, that said, "Hey, yeah, maybe I can play in a bigger stadium, in a perceived bigger conference, but we're all we're all going to be the same." The other thing I like is the fact that we're trying to position ourselves that if there is another expansion, you know, we're going to play at the, at the Power Five level. You know, from as far as benefits for student athletes. Uh, I'm talking with, with uh, uh, Jim tomorrow about you know maybe doing some expansion of our stadium and, and making some enhancements there. You know the direction of our program is is sky high, and I think that's what kids are excited about. That we've done a great job so far, but the future is going to be even brighter.